Welcome back to AngleJS. Today we're going to be looking at solving leak code 42, trapping rainwater. So given that n non-negative integers representing an elevation map with the width of each bar is one, compute how much water it can trap after raining. So we have the elevation map, the height array, which is the height at each index. Now, what we need to consider here is where can water be trapped? Well, it can be trapped between blocks, right? So for example, water cannot be trapped here because there is no block on the left side. So any water that's added here is going to overflow. Likewise, any water added here is going to overflow because there isn't a block on the right side. What do we also need to consider? Well, we need to consider the block height. So we have two blocks of different heights here. Now, what is the maximum amount of water that we can store between these two blocks? Well, it's going to be based on the height of the smallest block because any water added above this height, again, is going to overflow over the smallest. So how can we go about achieving that? Well, there are two solutions, both have optimal time complexity of a linear fashion. But the first one has linear space complexity. And we're going to further optimize that to O1 space. So let's look at both of these solutions. So here we have our elevation map. We have the heights array. Now, like we said, we need a way to compute the minimum between two blocks, right? And the way we're going to achieve this is we're going to have two linear scans of the heights array. The first one, we're going to iterate through each of these heights. And each point, we're going to calculate the maximum. So for example, here, it's going to be one. Here, the height, the maximum height is going to be two. Here, the maximum height is also going to be two. So we're going to be carrying that along. And then finally we get here and it's three and it'll be three for the rest of the elevation map. And we can store that within an array. And it'll look something like this. And like we said, we're going to do two iterations. The second one is going to be iterating backwards because we want to work out the minimum at any one point. And in order to do that, we need to work out the height from the left and the height from the right. So we're going to iterate through this backwards and compute an array similar to forward max, which is going to look something like this. Now we have the three pieces of data we need to solve this problem. So pause the video, see if you can solve it yourself using this. So if we look at each height, let's start off by looking at a position where there's water. From this position, how can we calculate the value of one using this? Well, like we said, at any point, we're going to need the minimum value. So we compare the forward max and the backward max. So the forward max is going to be one because there's this block here. And the backwards max is going to be three from this block here. So now we have two blocks that are either side of the water. So we choose the minimum, which is from forward max. So it's going to be the value of one. And in order to calculate the amount of water that can be stored here, we just need to subtract the value at height from the minimum between these two. So that's going to give us the value of one here, which is exactly what we want. Just to check, let's check another point where there is water. So let's look at this one. We look at forward max and backward max. We choose the minimum, which is two. And then all we do is we subtract heights at that position from the minimum between forward max and backward max, which is exactly what we want. So this gives us the formula of calculating the minimum between forward max and backward max, and then subtracting the height from that. So we can do this calculation in place and tot up the values by iterating through this array once more. But just for visual representation, this is what it would look like after being carried out. And if we add up the values within here, it's going to give us the value of six, which is the answer, right? because we have one here, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is the first answer, running in linear time and space, because we have forward max array, a backwards max array. Like we said, this can be done in place, but this is just visual representation. But these two are going to be the same length as height. So that can be considered 2n, which can be brought down to n linear space. So now we need to look at optimizing this. So we said we could do this and bring space down to constant. So we need to come up with a solution that can remove the forward max and backwards max. And the way we're going to do that is with two pointers. So in the last slide, we had forward max, backward max and trap set as arrays. Let's update these to be just integer values. So we've removed that space and now we can solve this problem. So the whole idea about this is we have two pointers left and right. As long as left is less than right and we have a maximum to the left a forward, we can store water here, similar with the right side. So if backwards is less than right, so we know that there is a block on this side that is greater than the value that we're currently on. So all we need to look at is backward max to see if there is a block to the left of this. If there is, then we can store water here. So let's see it in action. So we look at the heights array. We take the left and the right forward max and the backwards max. And I'm going to update these to left and right max. So is the value at left less than right? Yes, it is. It's at zero and right is at one. So what do we do? Well, we check if there is a left max, so a block on the left of the current position we're on. There currently isn't. So we can't add water here because it's just going to overflow. So we increment this left pointer, the smallest value. Now, left max can be updated to one. We compare. So is left less than right? No, it's not. So we're going to be looking at the right pointer. We're at one. We need to check if there is a right max greater than the current value one. So is there a block to the right of this that will allow us to store water here? No. So we decrement the value. So left less than right. Yes, it is. 
So here we can update right max to two. Is left less than right? Yes, it is. Left is one, right is two. So we compare, is there a left max? Well, we have left max of one, but the current value we're on is one, two. So this is going to give us the value of zero. So we can increment that value. Now here we can actually see the purpose of the left and right pointer. So left is currently less than right. So we know that there's a block on the right side of this left pointer. So we need to determine if there is a block on the left side. So we look at left max. Left max is one because we've already visited this block. So we know we can store water here because we have left max minus the current value of height, which is one. So we can update trapped to one. Then we can increment the left pointer. We're both at two now. So we can increment the left max. Right max is two minus two. So that's going to give us zero. So we decrement the right pointer. Is left less than right? No. So we look at the right pointer. We know that there's a block to the left of right, but now we need to check if there's a block to the right. So we look at right max, which is set to two. The current value of height is one. There is one block worth of water that can be stored here. So we can update trap. Now let's speed through the rest of this. So we decrement the right pointer. We compare left and right. They're both the same. So we look at the right pointer again. Two is compared to two, so the right max. That's not going to allow us to trap any water. Now the right pointer has moved to three, so right max can be incremented. Again, we can't store water here, so we increment the left pointer. So we compare the left max with the current value. That gives us a value of one that can be stored here. So we update trap to three, increment the left pointer again, compare with left max. Left max is two, we're at zero, so that's two blocks of water that can be stored here. So that goes up to five, increment the left pointer again. We have one being compared with two, that's an extra one block of water that can be stored here. So that gives us six. We move the left pointer along. Now left is no longer less than right, and we can return our answer of six. And this is the optimal solution with linear time and constant space. So let's jump into the code. Let's start off by declaring our variables. So let left equals zero, let right equal heights.length minus one, left max, right max, and trap water, all set to zero. So with the two pointer, we're gonna say, well, left is less than right. And then we're gonna update left max which is going to be equal to math.max, left max, and height at left. We also need to update right max, which is going to be the maximum between right max and height at right. Now we said, if height at left is less than height at right, then we want to be looking at the left pointer. So we're going to subtract the current value at height at the left pointer from left max, and we're going to add this to trapped water, and then we're going to increment the left pointer. Otherwise, we're going to be doing the same for right max. So we're going to subtract from right max, the height at right and add this to trap water and then decrement right. And finally, we just need to return trap water and give this a run. Okay, so we've used heights plural instead of singular. So let's remove that. Let's give this another run. It's been accepted. Let's run it. And there you have it. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.